just going to crawl in here. Keith, if you don't shut that freezer off, you're going to break it just like you did the air conditioner. I'm hot! Everybody's hot. Everybody that can't afford air conditioning, that is. We could be heading for a record high today. Mm -hmm. If you can't be on the beach, check the old Freon in your AC and rev it up to high. Shut up! We're already 89 degrees and on the way up and out of sight. You know, I just hate these guys on the radio. Disc jockeys love days like this. They love to sit there in their air conditioner studios talking about how hot it is for everybody else. If this is all Lionel Walker just fault if he hadn't been too cheap to update the air conditioning. And that all what I broke it then. I hate being hot. Will you stop whining? I can't help it. Something happens to me when I'm this hot. I've never been able to take it. Nurse Fryman, Nurse Fryman. Dr. Donnelly, I need to speak to you. I think there's been a mistake. I'm not on the schedule to assist you in surgery this afternoon. That's correct. I don't understand. I spent a tremendous amount of time preparing and studying all the literature on this procedure. Now, I was looking forward to working beside the man who created it. Look. I'm on the surgical team. Today is my normal rotation. And I'm the obvious choice because I'm the best. Dr. Clark, as you so astutely pointed out, I did create this procedure. Therefore, I believe myself to be uniquely able to determine who should assist me. I have so determined, and you are most emphatically not that person. My qualifications have nothing to do with your decision, and we both know that. If this is how you intend to comport yourself, not only will you never assist me again, you will find yourself looking for another hospital. Understood? Dr. Carl to OR. Dr. Carl to OR. Daddy, I wish that when you... You're ten minutes late. Don't make a habit of this. Wait, I'm not even on your rotation. Come to my hotel room this evening, 7.30, for dinner. Okay? Oh, OR3 is ready, Dr. Donnelly. Oh, thank you. 7.30? Sharp. You look wonderful. Why can't you wear this? It's, it's, it's too hot. It's not cold. Believe me. It's not a sin to show your arms. Trust me. No? All right. Whatever you say, you wear that. Now, we, we, uh, we packed everything in here, didn't we? For the baby, too? Okay. Maybe we'll have fun. We will have fun. Even if it kills us, we will have fun. That's the door. Excuse me. Oh, hi. Good morning. How are you? I hope I'm not disturbing you. Uh, not at all. Come in. It's my day off, so I thought I'd stop by, see how Sarah's doing. I like to see that it's your day off, too. You're in your collar. Right. Yeah, no, I don't always wear it on my day off, especially I think it'd be a little uncomfortable on a day like this. Yeah, I bet. Looks like you're beating the heat. Well, actually, uh, we were all on our way to the beach. Ah, great. Great. Sarah. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hi, I'm uh, happy to see you. You look very pretty. Huh? No, no, you should be comfortable on a day this hot. Well, that's, that's why I told him we are going to beach, right? Sign for beach? Yes. Beach. Good. Pick me. <laughs> oh, no. No, no, no. I, I, I can't come with you. No. It's all right, really. It's, in fact, it's a good idea. Why don't you come, come with us? It is so good to have you back again. I feel like I have my life back. Going? Look, I got a long day today, all right? It's early. Come on, come back to bed. Last night was wonderful. Look, don't talk. 
Exactly like a day at the compound. <laughs> you coming? I think it's been a long time since Sarah's been to the beach. Uh, it's been six years. Hope she enjoys it. I hope Sarah didn't force your hand in inviting me. No, not at all. Um, we're happy to have you with us. I'm sure Sarah will feel comfortable with you here. Well, as long as it doesn't make you feel uncomfortable. No, uh, not at all. It must be 100 degrees out, huh? Yeah, you want the bar? Here you go, sweetheart. I think you're right. I'll tell you what, why don't I get us something to drink? Uh, Some thank lemonade? you, Father. That would be great. And uh, since it's my day off and I don't have my collar on, would you just call me Michael? Oh, you went to get us something to drink. Uh, excuse me, lady. Hey, hey, lady, do you mind? What, are you deaf or something? Stand there like you own the whole beach. It's all right. It's all right. Hey, show a little patience next time, will you? You help me sit down? right to complain. His air conditioning is broken. It's 101 degrees out. So until it's fixed, I want you to make sure there's ice in his room, and I want you to check in there every five minutes. Do you understand that? Yes, Dr. Dr. Scott, I want to talk to you. No. Sorry, lousy time, Heather. Look, I know you're busy right now, no, but I gotta take I'm not minutes. busy. I'm angry. I know. I heard enough of what my father said before. Heather, your father's the last person we should discuss right now. Scott, there's really no way around it. Are you sure? Are you sure you want me to tell you what an ass I think your father is? I should be in there right now in the surgery room assisting him, but he picked someone else. Now, it has nothing to do with my work as a surgeon. I assisted him before, and he knows that I'm damn good. Scott, you know that's not the reason he's being so tough on me. No, no. Tough, I can handle. He's not being tough, Heather. He's being unfair, and I'm not going to let him get away with that. He's in charge, Scott. There's nothing you can do. Oh, really? You watch. I'm going to prove to him that I have every right to be the first assist on his surgical team, even if that's to shove the facts down his throat. It's not going to work with him, Scott. Believe me. Do you have any other suggestions, Heather? Other than transferring to another hospital? Forget it. Your father may be a total jerk, but he has the surgical skills and knowledge that I need to learn from. And I intend to do just that. There's turkey juice everywhere. Baby, I solved it. Steaks in plastic bags, huh? Huh? Oh, I can't stand <laughs> Clever? It. I can't stand this. Would you like some pork chops? No, Keith. Huh? No, I really, I cannot live like this. I can't take this heat. I'm going to wither away. There's going to be nothing left of me by the time we get married. Come on, one pork chop under each armpit and a leg of lamb on your stomach, you'll feel great. Oh, that is disgusting. What? You're gonna defrost everything in the freezer, Keith. You know, if we don't die from heat exhaustion, we're gonna starve to death. Oh, honey, come on. Don't be such a funk. Let me pork your pits. <laughs> I can't help it. I can't, I can't stand this. I'm gonna be a mess. I'm gonna be a wreck for the wedding. Honey, I may have a lot of power in this town, but I do not have my thumb on the heat in this town. 
Yes. You don't have your thumb on anything. You are a boob. Why don't you get out, sell those diamonds, and get our air conditioned? Don't do that. Do not stop that. Do not squirt me with that water. Haven't you made a big enough mess already? I mean, you dragged out all the pork chops, the turkey, everything all over the place, and you ruined our living room. All the beautiful things I got on Wheel of Fortune, you destroyed them. Hi. I'm home. Hey, Ben, you're two minutes late. I'm sorry. I had to go to six stores before I found out the, you know, the, the, the kind of uh, chocolate-covered marshmallow bars that you like. Did you find them? Yeah, they're right here. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I mean, there's some laundry to do. You need to do the I laundry. I thought it was your day to do the laundry, huh? The phone rang. I answered it. I answered the phone three separate times. Then the doorbell rang. I had to answer the door. I'm answering the door. I'm answering the phone. I'm doing as much as I can here. Do you hear me? Do you hear You seem more relaxed. Yeah, I'm working on it. I love watching Samantha play, and I love being by the water. It's somewhat relaxing. I'm glad I moved here. What about you? Do you spend a lot of time at the beach? No, not a lot, but I know what you mean about the effect it has. Hmm. The ocean can really help you forget everything for a while. Oh! Mark, oh, do you want to stay here? Okay. You said you wanted to go for a, for a walk? Oh, fine. We'll be here. Bye-bye. <laughs> we'll see you soon. Your daughter's so amazing to watch. See the look in her face when Sarah made that sandcastle? What's the matter, sweetie? I always love looking at her face. And at her eyes. They have beautiful eyes. And I love the way she looks at the world in such an innocent place. Yeah, sometimes I think that deep down, that's what we're all trying to do, just get back to that childhood innocence. Me too. Why is that so surprising? I don't know. Oh, I tell you, I think that's why I became a priest five years ago, was just to try and get a second chance at that childhood wonder. Not exactly like the police force, huh? No. No, it's not like being a cop. I get the feeling that you were hurt as a detective. Not physically, but in another way. Let's not talk about it. You're absolutely right. Talking about it really doesn't make it any better, does it? You're thinking about Mason, aren't you? I always think about Mason. He's everywhere. He's in her. He's everywhere. And I can't forget. I don't want to forget. But I don't think that I'll ever be able to love anyone the way that I love him, ever. I just won't. The time will come. So, uh, what's the occasion for the command performance tonight? I wasn't aware that our family needed an occasion to get together for dinner. Daddy, the last time you invited Michael and me to dinner, you announced in the middle of the appetizer that you were divorcing Mom. I remember. Wonderful pate. So, what's the bombshell tonight? No announcements. I just thought that since it's been so many years since the three of us have been together, we might enjoy sharing some caviar and talking over old times. Okay. If you want to try and mend things with Michael, I think it's a good idea. I'm wanted in surgery. See you tonight. Dr. Padgett? Dr. Padgett? Please call me, sir. I'm glad to see you have your anger in check. Sorry, Scott. You know, don't you, that I didn't want any of this to happen? That's why I didn't want to tell my dad about no, you and I. No, no. I have absolutely no regrets that your father knows about us, Heather. Look, what happened between us means everything to me. I meant it when I said that I love you. But whether you and I have a future together or not, I have to be able to stand up to your egomaniacal father. Scott, wait a minute. What? You weren't the only one who said I loved you before. I'm not trying to pretend that things haven't changed since my dad got here, but hopefully they're things that... that we can still resolve. Where do we begin? Dr. I Kyle wish I knew. 
What is that look in your eye? Um, how would you like to take me out to dinner tonight? I'd love it, but I can't help but feel as if there's something to this. I uh, know. No, uh, can you pick me up at 7 o'clock? Sure. Any place in particular you'd like to go? Yeah. You and I are going to have dinner with um, Michael and my dad. Yes, yes, no, I, I can be there. All right, yeah, I, I'll, I'll see you there then. Thank you. They want to see me on that, that business management job again. That's great. <laughs> yeah, you see, you're back. My luck has changed. Come here. Mm. Hey, look, I'm going to have to go over there right away, but I'll be back soon, all right? in this heat. Well, thank you. That's nice of you to say, but I don't like this heat either. Well, I guess we have something in common. Do you mind if I sit down? Actually, yeah, I'm waiting for someone. Well, I guess that's an answer. Can I sit down? Look, I just told you that... What are, you, what are you doing here? I need you, Kelly. Did you follow me? Yeah, I did. Well, you shouldn't have. I wish you'd go now. No. Keith. Keith, the weatherman said this weather could go on through the weekend. I mean, we should do something. Maybe we could pitch Brandon's pup tent in the backyard and sleep out there. What do you think? Keith? Keith! What? What are you doing? Honey, I'm just trying to cool off. You ought to try this. You want some? No. Honey, you know, you should really do this. You don't know what you're missing. I mean, you got to keep your temperature down on a day like this. This is the man I'm going to marry and spend the rest of my life with? May as well be marrying a pig. <laughs> Every day is going to be like this. No. Oh, yeah. You'll love it. <laughs> Just wait and see. No, I can't stand this. Keith! I can't stand this. I can't live like this. Hey, baby, come on. The heat is getting to you. Things are going to get better, sugar. No, they're not. They're going to get a whole lot worse, Keith. We live in this million-dollar house. we got solid gold plumbing, but our, 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 our air conditioning does not work. This is ridiculous. We're going to have a wedding. We're going to have nobody who's going to show up because it's going to be too hot. We're going to die from this heat. We're not even going to make it to our wedding. Honey, come here. Come here. Come here, my baby. No. Honey, I hate it when you're in a funk like this. I hate it when you're angry and I'm not the reason. Well, then stop making me angry. Get me out of this mess now! <gasps> Go take this for me. Go take this. Go take this. Are you clowning? Are you clowning? Yeah. Sarah Santa Juan in the red flowered bathing suit reminded her the mother superior at St. Patrick's. Yeah. Oh, that, you mean that woman? I saw her. You're right. That's true. That's true. Oh. Sweetie. What tired? a terrible day. Aren't you miserable? I think there's someone here 
It needs to finish. You might think you're right. I know. Oh, give me a big hug. I love you. I love you. Okay. Here, we'll fly her over. Ready? One, two. Whee! See you later. I love you. See you later. That daughter's a real charmer. I sure think so. Sit down. She doesn't take people that easily. She does like you. Yeah, well, I think she's crazy about Sarah. I think so, too. I want you to know I'm real glad Sarah's here. I, I haven't seen Sarah that happy in all the days I've known her. I'm really glad about that. I'm, it's nice to see her open up, you know? Yeah, well, it's always good to see the other side of people that you care about. Sure is. I'm about to start dinner, and you're more than welcome to stay if you'd like. Oh, I wish I could. Um, well, I have to have dinner with my father tonight. You don't sound very thrilled about that. <sighs> well, I told you I don't get along with him particularly well. Hmm. Not that I... Don't hope that that changes. But... Well, maybe tonight something will change. I hope it does. So do I. Sarah, um, I gotta go. But it was, it was really good to see you. Yeah, oh, I love the picnic. And uh, I'll see you later. Thank you again. Well, thank you. Um, I gotta say, I... Oh, sorry. <laughs> I really had one of the happiest days of my life. I really did. Well, I'm glad. Yeah. Thanks again. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Please, just go away. Kelly, I can't go away. But you think I want to follow you around like this, huh? I see your car up on the coast highway. I can't even stop myself. I got to come see you. You've seen me. Now, please go away. No. And I know you don't want me to go away. Well, if you won't go, then I will. Come on. Please, let's go with me. It's so crazy. All I want to do is talk to you. There's nothing to say, DJ. What do you mean there's nothing to say? I know how you feel about me. I could see it in your eyes right there when I touched you. I could sense it in you. Why do we got to play these games? God, I'm just getting so sick of this. All I want to do is just grab you. DJ, I have gone back to Jeffrey. I live with Jeffrey. What? He's my husband. Yeah, yeah, he's your husband on paper. What? You can't write that on a piece of paper how about when you feel about passion about somebody. You can't write on a piece of paper how you want somebody so bad. You can't stop it! You know why you want me to stop it? Because you know in your heart you want me as bad as I want you. I don't want to be around you. I don't want to have anything to do with you. Oh, yeah? And why aren't you moving? I'm not holding you now. Why don't you run away? Because I don't have to, TJ. I've made my choice. Have you? I can't give you up, Kelly. I can't. So what prompted you to call me today, Kelly? I moved back in with Jeffrey. I slept with him. Did that make you feel better? It made Jeffrey happy. Is that what you wanted? What I want is to be relieved of all the pressure. The pressure from Jeffrey or from TJ? From both of them. Jeffrey wants everything to be just the way that it was. So I thought, I'll go back, I'll try, but it just isn't there. It's not there anymore. I'm just... Now I know I was completely wrong to even go back to him. And what about TJ? I'm afraid. Why? Because... Because I've never felt this way about anybody before. He's all I can think about. He gets near me and I tremble. I'm so obsessed with him. I'm afraid if I... It's okay, go on. I'm consumed by him. I'm consumed by the thought of him, the thought of, of his touch, the thought of making love with him. But it's so powerful, it's so strong that I know that it can't always stay that way. And once it begins to fade, what will, what will we have left? What do you have with Jeffrey? I care a lot about Jeffrey. I care about what happens to him. He's been very good to me. What about the passion? It's gone. It's gone. 
Is it the same with TJ as it was with Jeffrey? No. No, with Jeffrey, I always felt very in control of my feelings. But with TJ, that control's gone. It's like I don't know where it's gonna take me. There's something inside me that is so strong and so powerful, and it's pushing me in his direction, and it scares me to death, because what if I give in to him, Heather, and then I lose him? What do I do? Those are cute pictures, yes? Yeah? <laughs> You don't look, you don't look silly. You look happy. Why was it a special day for you? I want you to feel a part of my family. We've both lost something very, very important. That's why the family is very important. You're welcome for the wonderful day. <laughs> ah. It looks great on you, really. Not bad at all. Yes? Oh, I'm sorry. I was looking for Dr. Donnelly Sweet. This is Dr. Donnelly Sweet. Oh, you must be Father Donnelly. Yeah. He should be out shortly. Great. Thank you. Glory for excellence in surgery and compassionate service to humanity. Compassion? You're going to be a cop? Yeah, I feel it's something I can do where I'll really get a chance to help people. Well, I suppose you might as well do it. God knows there's not much chance of you getting a job that's really worth something. Compassion. Michael, you're ten minutes early. Am I? And I'm surprised. After all I've taught you about punctuality, or maybe you're just eager to have the evening over with. On the contrary, I just don't want to miss a minute of it. After all, it's been 15 years since we had our dinner. Yes, your sister was reminding me of that this afternoon. She's gonna be here, isn't she? Of course. I'm sure she won't mind if we start without her. I hope that your marriage to the church doesn't require abstention from some of the rewards of hard work. Well, if that was a reward for hard work, my parishioners would be swimming in champagne. Point made. Will you, uh, will you make a toast? Well, this is your territory, so when you come to the church, then I'll make the toast. All right. Then my toast is to our future together in Santa Barbara. Hmm. Where's the um, collar tonight? Sometimes I don't wear it. It's my day off. You actually get a day off? Seems odd for a profession that requires such absolute devotion. Tell me. Do, uh, do they pay you by the hour? Do you have to punch a time clock? If you're so interested in my job, why don't you come out to the church and uh, you can see me in action. The problem is that I have difficulty thinking about it as a job. I see. Well, how would you characterize what I do? I don't know precisely what you do. But I've always felt that men who entered the priesthood were escaping responsibility. For example, you couldn't handle being a cop, so you fled to the church. Not that I think that that's any worse than being a cop, mind you. Well, that's very generous of you. Well, there. 
I've done exactly what I said that I didn't want to do. Huh. See what you do when you come early? Blow my whole plan. Why don't we start over again? It seems pointless to me. We'll just end up in the same spot. Well, not necessarily. It could end differently. If I allowed you to tell me exactly what you felt about your profession. You really want to know? I really want to know. All right. There are many reasons I chose the church. Hi, Michael. Hi. Hi Daddy. Honey. You both know Scott. Keith? Is that better? No, it's freezing in here. I'm coming out. There, I told you I fixed it. I told you I would. I never knew you were so mechanically inclined. Neither did I. But when I was 12 years old, I fixed the toaster. It felt much the same way. Baby, I just hated to see you miserable face. Get away from what? me! <laughs> what is that? What is that smell? <laughs> Chocolate? I don't... Oh, honey, would you give me a break? It's 100 degrees. I've been working down there. I haven't had a chance to jump in the shower. No, I'm used to the way you smell. This is something else. It smells like smoke. Oh, it was supposed to be a surprise. What, you were going to burn the house down and collect the insurance money? Oh, I went into the freezer for you, baby. I got a suckling pig and put it on the barbecue. Yes! Yeah. A barbecue pig. Suckling pig. Suckling. Suckling. Suckling pig. I got it! Suckling pig I got. We're gonna eat like Henry VIII, drink like Louis XIV, and for dessert, play Toro. You're absolutely crazy. Get out of your mind! That's why you married me, baby. I haven't married you yet. That's why you're gonna marry me, baby. Get away, stay away. Don't get that stuff on me, please. <laughs> Kelly, is that you? Yeah, yeah. Hey. Hi. Hi. Where you been? Mm. Oh, I just... I had some uh, errands to run. Is everything okay? Sure. Sure. How did the interview go? Ah, um... I think you would have been proud of me. They offered me the job. Oh, honey, that's wonderful. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Did you take it? Well, no, I wanted to talk to you about it first. I said I'd let them know tomorrow. Well... I, I think if this is something you want to do, I think it should be your decision. Yeah, I know that. Uh, I just wanted to let you know about it first. There's a lot of travel involved, and I, like I said, I'd let them know my final decision tomorrow. Hey, look, you have really changed my luck around. For the first time in weeks, I finally feel good, and I think that <laughs> that deserves a little celebration, don't you? I don't really feel much like going out tonight. Neither do I. So, uh, I thought about you the other night, Michael. Scott and I drove down to a Dodgers game. Why? Are you a Dodger fan, Michael? Yeah, um, no, I'm a Mets fan. Well, maybe you'd like to make a friendly wager when the playoffs come around. Valenzuela against Gooden? Uh, sure. Frankly, I personally have never been able to understand how anyone could waste their time watching that game. Can't imagine where Michael picked up his interest. Did you, um, get interested through your father? Yes, I did. He likes the game. Hmm. And just what exactly is it that he does? He works on an oil rig, but right now he's in prison. Another thing you and Michael can talk about. Of course, <clears throat> to my own knowledge, I don't know if Michael's ever actually been in prison, though I presume that he sent men there. You know I have. What is it exactly that your father did, Dr. Donnelly? Nothing important. So he wasn't a surgeon, like you? No, but he worked very hard. He was what was then called a self-made man. What do you call a self-made man today, Daddy? An extinct species. 
I wouldn't be so sure. Well, thanks for the great meal, Dad, but I gotta get back to the church. I thought this was your day off. Uh, yeah, it is, but there are certain duties that I have to perform in the evening. I will never understand the mysteries of the church. Um, Michael, you're not even gonna stay for dessert? No, you're in good company. Uh, besides, I've dominated the conversation all evening. If the man has to go, he has to go. It's great to see you again. Yeah, it's good to see you too, Michael. Good luck. Thank you. I hope we can do this again soon. Preferably at a time when the church can give you a little bit more time off. Night, Michael. Good night. Well, Clark, I hope that you don't have to go home early, too. Heather must have had some purpose in bringing you here. Perhaps now we can discover what that was. Please don't start. I'm not starting anything. Now, since I took the liberty of ordering dinner, I thought I would leave dessert to the true sweet tooth. Okay, is, is there a menu? Yes, somewhere? next room, by the phone. You know, on second thought, I don't really need dessert. <laughs> well, I'd certainly like something. I'm sure clock you would. Daddy, you know, it's not very polite to invite people to dinner and then to call them by their last names. You invited Clark to dinner. And it's perfectly all right with me. I'd like some dessert. Okay. <clears throat> um, I will, uh, just a second. <laughs> Don't rush. James, cigars. Yes. This life, don't you, Clark? Actually, I despise it. Other than your work, I'd probably despise everything you stand for. Really? Mm-hmm. We're going to be honest with each other this evening, then, eh? Well, why not? Let's give it a shot. Right? We're both here. Let's bare our souls, as they say. I don't mind. I've got nothing to lose. You, on the other hand, could lose your job. No, I could only lose my position at the hospital, but I don't think that's going to happen, you know, because though you represent practically everything that I detest, stupidity is not one of those things. And you'd have to be a real idiot to get rid of a doctor as good as I am. I have the impression that you have the impression that I like arrogance. Well, you certainly embody it. I don't think you have the faintest idea how much misery I could give you in your life. Probably not as much as you've caused yourself. I feel sorry for you, Doctor. You feel sorry for me? Yes, I do. Because beneath all the arrogance and bluster, it's obvious you're a lonely man. You're so desperate to get your family back together, it's pathetic. But you have absolutely no idea how to go about that. So it's sad, but it's not going to happen. Since we're being so generous with pearls of wisdom, perhaps I'll share some with you. My daughter has always been attracted to men that I detest. She is only attracted to them. Long enough to make me very, very angry. You, Clark, are merely one in a very, very long line of losers that she will drop like that the instant that I become sufficiently angry. Now, you listen to me. Daddy, the hospital's on the phone. They said it's an emergency. Right. So, uh... Yeah. How's it going? Piece of cake. All right, preparing for OR5. I'll be there instantly. Looks like you're about to get your wish. What's that? That critical that came in this morning is hemorrhaging. I'm going to perform my procedure. You'll assist. Let's go. Oh, oh you're ready for bed. I'm sorry. It's no, not important. No, it's all right. You could come in. You sure? Yes, I'm sure, of course. I'll, uh, I'll go get Sarah. Oh, no, I, I didn't want to see Sarah. You didn't? 
No, I, uh, I was just out to dinner with my dad, and, uh, I was thinking about what we were talking about today, and... I just realized I... I hate my own father. I can't forgive him for... You know, I'm a priest. I can't forgive him for what he did to my mother and my sister. Did he hurt you? Well, it's just he came here. He's looking for love, and he's desperate for it, and I don't have any to give him. I don't really know what I should say to you. I don't know... No, I, 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 I came here because... Because you need someone to talk to, maybe, huh? Well, there are lots of people at the mission. To, they're willing to talk. You know, I've got a whole convent full of sisters. Well, maybe they don't want to talk to a man with failings. They don't want to talk to a priest that has problems of his own. That's human. I'm not sure if I'm... Well, what I am first anymore. I'm not sure if I am a priest. Or a man. It was so like I said, it seems like there's a lot of opportunity in this. The only thing is the travel. Oh, he's you know, so excited. I don't see any reason why you wouldn't be able to come along How can I tell him? How do you tell someone you've sworn your life to that you don't love him anymore? Paris, Rome, I can't even admit it to myself. How can I tell Jeffrey I'll marry London. Hey, what do you think? tag for equality. What's been the emotional cost of having it all? Join Connie Chung on NBC Nightly News.